Welcome back. It's Tuesday, which means it's time to take a look at some of the news around the Ontario Hockey League. And we're going to start things off, of course, with the CHL Top 10 rankings. The Halifax Mooseheads, uh, they continue to lead the way when it comes to junior hockey in the Canadian Hockey League. They're on an eight-game winning streak, and they're number one for the second week in a row. Halifax is getting the job done over in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Now looking at the OHL representatives, there's only two teams again this week. First off, the London Knights. They came in at number seven. And for London, they went 3-0 and last week, including a 4 nothing win over the Guelph Storm to wrap up that three-game winning streak. And uh, for the Knights, Denver Barkey, he is on fire right now. A seven-game point streak, and over the last week in those three games, seven points. So Denver Barkey climbing the scoring charts in the Ontario Hockey League. And no surprise, really, Denver Barkey, he's got some great hands, good shot, and uh, he's... Uh, Helping lead the way for London as they had a, a bit of a slump there at the end of October, but have really started to turn things around. The other team making the cut for the CHL Top 10, the Kitchener Rangers. They come in at number eight. And for Kitchener, they had back-to-back -back shutouts uh, against the Owen Sound Attack and the Peterborough Peets from Parsons. Parsons looked fantastic in those two games. And then they beat the Sioux Greyhounds, who are first in the West Division. So Kitchener... Also going 3-0 last week, extending their winning streak to five games. Uh, the Kitchener Rangers, I don't know if anyone could beat them right now with the way they're playing, especially with Jackson Parsons in net. He has been solid, and uh, they're looking to continue that this weekend. They've got a home-and-home -home against the Windsor Spitfires, which could be a bit of a trap game. So we'll see what happens there with Kitchener. And when you look at the overall standings right now, Kitchener first place in the OHL, three points up on the London Knights. So it's uh, quite the competitive division again, the Midwest. And it's London and Kitchener right now going toe-to-toe -to -toe at the top of the division. Now, this news doesn't affect the OHL, but it's kind of related. As Chris Knobloch been named the head coach of the Edmonton Oilers, he made his debut last night as uh, the Oilers defeated the New York Islanders. So Knobloch got his first career NHL win as a head coach. Now, Knobloch, if that name sounds familiar, it's because he was the head coach of the Erie Otters from 2013 to 2017. And he had a fantastic run. He was part of that Otters dynasty that won four straight 50-win seasons. And in all four of those seasons, they went to the Western Conference Final, made two OHL championship appearances. And in 2016, Knobloch was named OHL Coach of the Year. And I think with that kind of resume, uh, I think he is a good choice for an NHL franchise. Kind of surprised the New York Rangers let him go to Edmonton. He was the head coach of the Hartford Wolfpack. Uh, but uh, he was approached by the Oilers, and the Rangers gave him permission to speak, and now he's uh, on the West Coast. So Knobloch doing pretty good. And then you look at uh, the resume. I mentioned that they went to four straight Western Conference Finals. Well, in 2015, they went to the OHL Championship, lost to the Oshawa Generals, but Connor McDavid, of course, named playoff MVP in that series. And then they would win it all in 2017 against the Mississauga Steelheads. But uh, if you're an Otters fan, you also know that's the last time they were in the playoffs. So the team really hasn't been the same since Knobloch left. Mind you, there is the pandemic and the shutdowns and all that, which kind of disrupted the flow for junior hockey. And we're still feeling the effects of it with all the teams and just their draft picks and player development. But I, outside of that, Knobloch having a great run with the Erie Otters. And it's great to see him uh, now at the NHL level and being reunited with Connor McDavid and Warren Fogle, who both played uh, with him when they were a part of the Erie Otters organization. So congratulations to Chris Knobloch. Now another uh, coaching news, new change, and it has nothing to do with the Niagara Ice Dogs this time. It's Patrick Sanvito. He's back in the OHL. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because he is a former OHLer playing for the Windsor Spitfires and the Sudbury Wolves these last two years. He was with Queen's University men's hockey program as an assistant coach. So just going down the street, to the Leon Center, and he's now manning the bench there as an assistant coach. Uh, he did make his debut behind the bench for the Frontenacs on Sunday against the Oshawa Generals in that shootout win. So for Kingston, I think this is going to be good for them because San Vito, he served as captain. He knows how to be a leader. He's also a sol He was also a solid defenseman. You look at his points. He played in 284 games in the OHL, 8 goals, 35 assists, 43 points, which doesn't sound like a lot, but consider what he was like on the back end. He was physical. He knew how to play the game in front of his net. Uh, he was a leader both on and off the ice. So I think San Vito, uh, this is a good stepping stone for him and his coaching development. 
And uh, under Troy Mann, I think this Kingston Frontenacs team looks primed to make a climb up the Eastern Conference standings. They had that slow start, then they made the coaching change, and just with the pieces they have, I wouldn't be surprised if they make a, a move or two between now and the OHL trade deadline uh, just to try and bolster that lineup. But uh, things are looking up, I think, uh, in Kingston with that front next team. Now to end this off, just a, a bit of an injury note, talking about Colby Barlow and the Owen Sound attack. Barlow left uh, the game on Wednesday against the Kitchener Rangers, and he hasn't been back on the ice since, which is a big blow for the Owen Sound attack, who are really sputtering right now and trying to turn things around. since. Firing uh, Greg Walters and bringing in Rumble, uh, the team just hasn't been able to click and find that groove. They've been getting a couple wins here and there, getting you know some good performances from Barlow and Denny Gore and company, but then just missing the mark. So it just seems as though something's missing with this Owen Sound attack team, not meeting the expectations coming into this season. But if you look at Colby Barlow, a point a game player, he's played 14 games, nine goals, 14 or nine goals, five assists. 14 points uh, so far this season since coming back from the Winnipeg Jets camp. Uh, so it'll be nice, I'm sure, for Owen Sound fans to see their captain back on the ice and the attack uh, right now getting ready for a three-game road trip to the West Division. And that starts Thursday night in Windsor before stops in Sarnia and Flint. So for Owen Sound, a team desperate to turn things around. So those are the news items to cover for today. Let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on the CHL Top 10, some of the coaching changes in Kingston, or uh, even the situation with uh, Colby Barlow, your thoughts with the Owen Sound Attack. And, uh, you know, it's always good to see uh, the likes and subscribes. That helps the channel grow, and I appreciate all the support so far, and we will talk to you again soon.